Today on the channel, we're talking to Anushka Jain, who is the founder of SADS India, which is a for-profit company with non-profit incentives. Let's sit down and learn more about what it takes to grow a company from zero to 200,000 people served and over 100 B2B partners. Let's go. We're at the Chai Story, by the way, in Delhi. I'm excited. Let's go inside. Anushka, thanks for being here. Yeah, nice to be here. So we're in the Chai Story, one of our favorite restaurants here in Delhi. And the reason why we're here instead of Bangalore in your office is why? Why are we here in Delhi? So my parents are here, uh, and that's why I was here. And I was so happy that you were able to fly here because I don't have to fly to Bangalore now. <laughs> yeah, well, luckily Div is, he's got a kid on the way. So we're, we're here, we're based here. Uh, tell me more about SADS. What is, what is your background? Like, why should people listen to you? Why are we here? Yeah, so before I dive into what SADS is, I'll tell you why the idea exists, right? Um, so it started with a very old story. Um, my mom used to go to this NGO to donate the items we are not using anymore. And we used to go it every year on my birthday. And we used to go to the same NGO each time and just give away everything. And I realized that sometimes um, people don't know where to give, what to give. And my mom was just donating everything without thinking actually if the items are actually being used there, right? Um, and I thought my mom is very lazy. <laughs> but uh, eventually I figured out it's not about being lazy. It's about she has no idea where to give her stuff away. And she really wanted to get rid of this. She really wanted to do something good and not end into landfill. Uh, but she has no idea. And I just realized that people are so busy in their lives. They don't have time to go to the NGO and like figure out where is what required. And someone has to fix this uh, problem. And that's the idea or the uh, idea was coined uh, then. And uh, it was a basic idea saying that, okay, we have extra stuff to give away. And I researched more on this that people are piling so much stuff in their houses. And the idea was how to get this pile of clothes, which is lying or a pile of shoes or whatever you have into the hands of people who can use it and like help them and also keep these items away from landfill. So that was the basic idea. Uh, share at doorstep typically is a now a doorstep donation pickup service so which people can donate the items they're not using anymore uh, it can be anything reusable clothes toys furniture electronics uh, we'll come to your doorstep and get delivered to the charities we support and this isn't a small operation you've got what over 200,000 people that you're touching partnerships with over 100 nonprofits. right right so started very small we just had like I would say five NGOs when we started. I was working in Accenture, so I used to go in the morning shifts to collect the pickups myself. Uh, fast forward, we were doing uh, the pickups to uh, in, uh, interns, which we hired from uh, the uh, universities and the volunteers, etc. Fast forward, we had our own logistics internal logistics team, which we were doing, and then fast forward, we did API integrations, made use of tech, and made it big. So now we are in 11 cities. Uh, we have close to 120 NG partners across these 11 cities, and we are planning to go pan India in the next two months. What goes into that? How are you? How do you grow? How are you gathering these partners? Sure. So um, um, I would say it was just that I didn't plan to make it this big. It was just an idea. I had it in college just to make extra bucks to go on dates. I would say uh, I was taking part in business plan competitions, and this one was winning each time. And I was like, how do I take the next step to make it big? So it was never that I have to make it into a really big company, but I was always clear it has to be a profit with purpose kind of business. Um, I'm better at sales and marketing, I would say, and selling numbers to the brands. Uh, so the idea was how can we have brands which are actually standing up for the cause these days and have people together uh, and make an ecosystem out of it. So that was the basic idea. So it started with something like, okay, I have to do the pickups. So I started doing the pickups when I was in Accenture uh, in the morning. I put up a pink website on things. And uh, people started pouring requests. Uh, I used to go and talk to people. So it was a basic market research which we did. Uh, so I'll not go on anecdotes that the requirements is there. I just went and talked to the customers. And I think I did around 150 to 200 pickups myself. Uh, then eventually we grew to 10,000 in multiple uh, pickups per day. And what we realized actually uh, that there's a huge gap between people and NGOs. Uh, NGOs in India is like it's a very segmented market, unlike uh, in the US, right? People have no idea what's going on in which NGO and they don't know what can be required where. On the other hand, people don't have time to drive to the NGO and figure out, etc. So the idea was how to actually bridge this gap 
and uh, in a sustainable manner. So then it came into the picture how to make money out of it, right? Because we want to make the whole process sustainable. So the first other any model which came into picture was to have brands sponsor the pickups and also have something in the, for them. Uh, so it started at the time when Snapdeal was uh, having the coupon system and had not turned into an e-commerce company. And uh, uh, what we did is we started doing collaborations with the small uh, stores, like something like a chai store or something. And uh, we gave them coupons for each time you donate something. So people donate something and they get coupons or vouchers. Uh, which can be redeemed for the different offers, etc. And uh, the brands started coming in and they started giving us vouchers, goodies and also paying us. So that became our revenue stream. Uh, but yeah, eventually I figured out this is not the revenue stream we can actually grow very fast. And that's when we started charging our customers a convenience fee. Uh, coming from middle class background, I never thought that people will pay for a pickup when they're already donating. Uh, so they, we did a small pilot and found that people are willing to pay a convenience fee when it comes to valuing their time because they don't have time. So it's a convenience for them. And that's how it became a profit for purpose business. Now we cover operations fee to the convenience fee we charge from people. Profit for purpose is an interesting way to put it because we've been calling ourselves activist entrepreneurs because we're doing similar um, where we're trying to teach Indian entrepreneurs to charge like Americans, charge 10 times more and start making American wages. But we're doing that through a, an $8 course. You know, they buy the course and then they do it. It could have, be, could have been a $1,000 course, right. but it's eight so that more people will buy it. But also you need to make money, otherwise the business won't survive. Right. Exact thing, it's a similar thing to what you're doing. Um, is, is there a reason why you didn't go the traditional NGO route and you instead right. are going this uh, profit with a purpose route? Right, so if you have seen for yourself as well, right, how much you can achieve with the money which you're getting, even if it's $8, when taken accumulation, it can actually do wonders for your marketing, for your product and everything. The same way, I think, when the money pours in, you know, you can give a good service to people, uh, otherwise you have to compromise on service. And we wanted something which is as good as Amazon uh, or Amazons of the world, where the service is 30 seconds and you're done with the pickup request. And it's like very easy, you have slot based uh, system whole tech end to end is being packed so that it's transparent. I think people don't want to compromise on the quality these days. They have very limited time and they want best quality because they're used to Swiggy and Amazons of the world and they want that kind of service. And that's what we aspired uh, to when we started. And uh, that was the whole process that we wanted a service which is very, very flawless and we don't compromise on quality even though we have to ask them to pay for it. How do you think about growth? of the business like where where are we going in the next three years five years how are you how are you growing the business sure so um we actually have been doing organically so far uh, i do know how to run facebook ads like i'm a champion in that <laughs> so we tried that uh, for a while uh, but our seo is very very strong uh, but we tried very very good growth hacking techniques to reach out to more audience and that's what we'll be doing much more in future uh, so coming to what we are doing right now is we are doing a lot of B2B2C partnerships with companies and brands. Uh, how that works is right now, one example is that we have launched this uh, campaign called Go Circle 100. Now employees are working remotely from home and the employers are trying to engage them in an employee engagement program. So what we have done is a Go Circle 100 in which the companies will sponsor the pickups for the employees and all the employees can have a free pickup done. Now, this is the right time to launch it because Joy of Giving Week is coming, the rally is on the way, everyone is decluttering. And most of the companies that we are targeting are the ones who have uh, net zero carbon 2025 or 2030 goals. So it's easy for us to launch that. So we are doing a lot of B2B2C strategies uh, because of which our CAC is much lower, like really low. Uh, and we're doing mostly organic stuff. And in future, our vision is much bigger actually. Uh, so share at doorstep is just the MVP for a much bigger vision we have. So how it happens is when you donate something, uh, you get points based on the carbon emissions that used. Uh, so as you can see, we have walked through. When you donate uh, your t-shirt, which say has a carbon emissions of say five units, right? Uh, and uh, you throw it off, or it goes into landfill after six months, or you don't use it, this is lying there. In that case, we miss out on the resources, we miss out on water, effort, whatever has gone into the t-shirt, right? If we are able to reuse it and make extend the life of these goods by at least one year, one and a half year, we are able to uh, reduce the carbon emissions by 27%. And that's the figure we are looking at. So each time people donate something, they get points based on the carbon emissions they use. And those are redeemable for different uh, goodies and vouchers. Or can be a small community driven um, uh, reward, right? Uh, so what we want to do in future is create like a Fitbit of sustainability and have many, many more sustainable actions been added. 
So each time you'll use Uber food or cycle to work or use EV. In that case, you'll get points. In case you're having vegan food or plant-based diet, you'll get points. In case you are having a credit card bill and you have shopped from sustainable brands, in that case, we plan to give you points. So we plan to give you points for everything which you're doing good. Uh, without nudging you much, but a subtle nudge telling you you can do better or how you can become better. It's like a dashboard for a sustainable life. And that's what we plan to become. And we are working on that product right now. Uh, and uh, our vision is to expand share at doorstep uh, in next one year or so uh, to a level that uh, we are able to penetrate the 60% market in India. Because uh, right now there are no much competitors and it's easy to penetrate the market. In the demographics, uh, we are targeting mainly 16 cities in India, which are having similar demographics as we are targeting right now, like the major ones, Delhi, Gurgaon, Mangalore, all these. And post that, we plan to uh, expand to this uh, sustainability uh, app. I love that you use the uh, American startups to frame this uh, this company for impact. Like you're using Fitbit, you're using all these people, and then you're changing what's worked for them and taking right. it out to, to actually do good for a lot of people. Right, Super cool. Right. When it comes to Facebook ads towards uh, Indian market, um, what have you been finding? Is it two questions around that? It's it's cheaper to advertise Indian, to Indians than it would be to the U.S., right? Have you seen? Has, has that affected your campaigns at all? How do you think about the Facebook ads? Sure. So I worked in Kyoja earlier, which was a U.S.-based company. So I've seen the Facebook ads for the U.S. as well as India. I've done with them as well, and, and for my company as well. And what I've seen is in India, the clicks are much higher. The cl per click rates is much lower. So people will click a lot on your website, but the conversions sometimes are lower. And that's why it's difficult sometimes to segment your market. So for example, in US, I can have 10 categories of people and be done with it, my segmentation. In India, I can have 10 categories and 10 further deep down levels to it because of the whole population thing, diversity thing, different cultures, different languages, and it becomes much more intense here. Uh, and that's why we generally have 10 campaigns, uh, I will say 10, ad sets under the campaign instead of how we used to do in US in which we would have a couple of them. So obviously it's more intense, more challenging, but more fun for sure because once you're able to crack it, the cost is much lower. The ROS which we can achieve here on the return on uh, the, the revenue which you are getting on the ad spend, that's much higher if you're able to filter it out well, which is in US it's much difficult to do sometimes. So you can reach ROS here of four or five if you really filter it out right. But in the US, it generally reaches 2 to 2.5, and that's how your product and CAC has to be revised that way. That's what we've been seeing with our international ads too. It's like 0 0.001 cents a click, but then there's so many clicks. Uh, we did actually get a uh, one to profitability. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's crazy. Well, okay, question on that. When it comes to payments, a lot of Indians don't have credit cards. Yeah. So how do you, a lot of Indians also don't have PayPal. Yes. So how are you? How do you accept payments? How do you get your Facebook ads to profitability in right. India specifically? So actually, uh, the customers we are targeting are the ones who are actually quite tech savvy. They are the people who are willing to pay a convenience fee on top of donating. Mm -hmm. So we are already filtered out the people who might not be tech savvy. But obviously, there are a lot of uh, uh, people uh, who are using our platform and who don't know how to do it. But what we have is we send them a link which can be shared with the friends and family. And generally, they share with their daughter or their son, and then they do it. So it's easy for them to do it that way. But I would say 90% of people are able to make the payments. Uh, we have laser pay integration, so they have most of the options. They have pay later option as well for a few of the banks. So you're using Paytm, and you have Google Pay, and all this stuff. Okay. Google Pay, UPI, uh, whatever, net banking, everything. That's something that's so foreign to me, because th this is like we have a dis we're spinning up an Indian bank account and everything to try to take it on our our site too. Because, yeah, nobody was using... My Google Pay is different than your Google Pay. If I have yeah. to pay Ankit, I have to only, I can only transfer him money through wire, even right. though we both have the same app. I think the problem in this is, like, you, not the Indian ecosystem. Yeah. I think you have to change and come to the Indian ecosystem to, like, fit in. Yeah, well, it's an interesting... It's been interesting because we're international, and it was only until coming to India that I understood how international doesn't really mean anything. Because in yeah. India, they use one payment system. Nigeria uses one, like... Yeah. Everywhere in the world has Romania, my co-founder's right. up there, he's got his own payments, like, it's all right. different. Right. I think Rizopi has something like this, I'm not promoting them, they're not giving me money. But uh, I think they do have international payments, there's something, I've not activated this, but you can check with them actually. How do you see this evolving in India? Is this a growing need? Is there a time where you think India is not going to need a service like yours? 
how do you how do you think about the future of, of uh, so i think the use cases are enough to for it to survive here or in us yeah. uh, i've uh, searched enough the us market as well um, the requirement is there what we have seen is there are a lot of charities or ngos exist all across the world but there is no aggregator which exists which kind of figure out and solve the problem through using tech and the tech is not there in the whole ngo industry i would say right uh, no one is figuring out especially good donation uh, in india it's much less uh, been uh, kind of noted because firstly we don't get tax exemption for uh, good donation unlike in us where we get right uh, secondly the value of it is much lower at times because of fast fashion people have so much stuff to give away and they just throw away etc so i think um, in india once we have so we have 252 million plus people in india who can utilize this so i know there are enough people who can utilize the items which we are discarding but in case we hit a roadblock for few items for example furniture items we get them a lot because people refurbish their houses especially during pandemic people are doing it a lot and if we get those items what we plan to do is there are multiple ways you can go you can go to renting companies and say that we have these items we want to rent it and the amount from this will go to charity right and the other ways to do it that you can actually list these items somewhere and have a kind of a auction for charity so there are different different ways you can do that and i have we have explored them if in case we hit a point where the demand and supply is not matching but i think that roadblock will come much later because so many people require so much stuff here india is a place where i think so many people struggle to have basic needs and uh, the point where we will reach that roadblock i think there will be a good problem to have for sure i agree okay somebody watching this interview where do you want them to go after this oh okay so i i would say go to our website and check out our website uh, and schedule a pickup prior service and i think yeah the journey starts from here i think our mission here is to have actually we call it we have analogy for this that we are making and trying to make people um, move from a lighter shade of green to a darker shade of green on sustainability and the journey doesn't start with having smart lights having solar panels on day one it starts with something really really small as small as give away your shoes or pair of shoes and see how it feels and see how the impact you have made in terms of carbon emissions reduced not in terms of numbers but in terms of say it is equal to say two rides to office you know something which uh, it's quantifiable and understandable enough and i think that's what i want people to do start your sustainability journey and yeah let's you get going it's addictive great thanks for being here thanks thanks nice for coming here yeah thanks for watching the video be sure to smash that like button to encourage this type of content on youtube subscribe for more videos like this and donate to her charity if you want to donate please go ahead and do that. The link is going to be down below. This was a very exciting interview and I'm very excited to be here in India and to do more. So subscribe if you want to support the channel and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. I'm Alex Berman.